Alrighty guys and welcome back to a whole new year. If you've been with us before, you probably recognize us, but I am Miss Izzy and I work in the outreach department here at Pasadena Humane. And with me, as always, is the awesome, the fantabulous Miss Michelle. Hi, Miss Michelle. Hello, Miss Izzy. I love all the adjectives that you use to describe me. You gotta use them. They make things a lot more fun. Now for my friends that have been here before, you know that we usually do our story time. This is a really great way for us to put out those really nice, awesome animal stories that can be super heartwarming. But if you're just joining us, we do have some webinar reminders to go over with you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss those up for you in just one second. If you've been with us before, you're already familiar with them. So no need to fret, just something that you're already familiar with. All righty, Ms. Michelle, whenever you're ready. Did it go flip over? No, I got There we go. There we go. All righty. Sorry, guys, it's a whole new year, so we got to get like right back into the into the groove of it. So here goes our webinar reminders. As you already know, this is an audio visual presentation, which means all attendees are automatically muted. So we won't be able to see or hear you, but you can see us even though we can't see you. Spooky. If you do have any questions in the middle of our presentation, we do ask that you use your chat box featured in your control panel. Please do not raise your hand either with the button or, you know, in real life because we won't see it. So type those thought provoking questions into the chat box. Today we are reading Jake the Growling Dog. This is written by Samantha Shannon and illustrated by Carrie Joyce. It's a very sweet story about a dog that's just a little misunderstood. If you do have to get up and leave in the middle of the presentation, don't worry about it. We are recording this as always, and we will be sending a copy of the recording to the email that you registered with. Upcoming, we actually are gonna have part two of the Jake the Growling Dog series. It's gonna be Jake the Growling Dog Goes to Doggy Gay Care. This is also written by Samantha Shannon, but it's actually illustrated by Li Yang. So a whole new illustrator, guys. This is gonna be brought to you February 9th at our usual time of 3.30 to 4 p.m. This is actually gonna be a really special one, guys, because we are gonna have the author joining us. So that's gonna be a great way to pick her brain if you wanna talk about her creative process. And do not forget that we do have our Kids for Animals online. So these are all um, a whole bunch of things that you guys can be able to do at home. So we do have our Animals Adventures workshop starting on Sunday, January 24th, and it's going to be a really, really cute one, guys. So I do recommend you go sign up. KFA Club is starting again. I don't know if I have any members, but I'm sorry, any members uh, with us today, but this is actually one of my favorite activities that we do. We bring in a lot of great guest speakers and there's also animal friends that are joining us. So that starts tomorrow. Today's your last chance to sign up. And for our scouts out there, we do have virtual scouting. So this is a great way to earn your Pasadena Humane patch that your troop leaders know. And without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and toss this back to you, Miss Michelle. All right, thank you so much, Miss Izzy. And as she said, stated before, we are reading Jake the Growling Dog, written by Samantha Shannon. So, uh, all right, without further ado, here we go. Oh, there's a cute picture of Jake. Looks like he's running through the forest. In an emerald green forest in the Pacific Northwest, you'll find Jake, a misunderstood dog at best. He has fur like fresh cotton candy, large pointy ears, and a big bushy tail that gets puffier each year. He has a caramel coat, 
a chocolate stripe down his face, and each tasty shade is in just the right place. Jake is fast, quite fast, they say, with a twitch and a spring as he goes on his way. Jake loves to run among the tallest of trees, swim in deep rivers, and chase after frisbees. But no matter what Jake loves to do, you'll always hear him growling too. He growls when he eats. Grrr. He growls while he plays. Grrr. And he growls while being scratched in his favorite ear place. Oh, I wonder why Jake does that. He growls while he sleeps. He growls while he swims. Grrr. And he growls in his bed while being tucked in. Grrr. Wonder if that's just a new way of snoring. One day, Jake was hiking a trail lined with thistle and two yellow warblers flew by with a whistle. Why do you growl? They asked, looking sad. What is it that always makes you so mad? I'm not mad, Jake growled cheerfully. I'm just as happy as can be. I'm having fun out here on the trail, dashing around and wagging my tail. Grrr. Well, there's those warblers flying overhead. But Jake, don't you notice most animals run away and even the little children won't play? Jake thought for a moment as he stopped for a sniff. And then he chewed on a particular, perfectly good looking stick. He growled while he thought, and with each snapping chew, his mind wandered back, and it wasn't good news. He growled at Molly when she scratched his ears. It was a growl of delight, but she ran off in fear. He growled at the neighbor's dog every day. Hi, Mr. Pomeranian, do you want to play? But the dog always left without a goodbye. Jake assumed that he was just shy. Jake didn't know why everyone was so scared. How could he show them how much he cared? They said it was his growly voice. Could it be? Didn't that make him sound unfriendly? So you see Jake's peeking through the fence at the Pomeranian as the Pomeranian is running away. While well, lost in his thoughts, Jake bit down on his lip. <coughs> he cried out in pain and whimpered a bit. Yet to the birds, it was the scariest of growls. It sounded more like a frightening howl. Full of fear, they took flight from the trees, leaving nothing but the falling fluttering of leaves. Why doesn't anyone understand me? Why can't they see I'm not actually mean? But nobody answered because Jake was alone by himself in the forest, all on his own. Then he heard a, a faint whispering call. Maybe he wasn't alone after all. Up here, Jake, the growling dog. I know your growl is your voice. You're just saying hello. Jake looked around, he looked up, he looked down, 
he became quite dizzy spinning around, zooming above at spectacular speeds. A flicker of blackness flew through the trees. I wonder if this creature is faster than Jake is. It was a lone black squirrel, nearly too swift to see. Jake couldn't find her. She was so fast indeed. I like you, Jake. You have a big heart. I can see. Really, that's all that's important to me. But others are scared, Brrr, Jake said with a groan. Playing just isn't that fun on my own, Grrr. I will help you, squeaked the squirrel from the tree. We'll work on your ground to make it friendly. Squirrel sounds like she has a plan. So Jake and the squirrel, whose name was Neat, spent days trying to make his voice sound sweet. Neat begged other animals to help with their training, but it took plenty of urging and they just kept complaining. A painted turtle stayed in her shell for a week after Neat tried to have the two of them meet. Like Jake has a smile on his face, even though he's still growling. But I can see how it would scare the turtle. And the warblers are looking on, and there's a deer and a duck. Let's see what happens. A black-tailed deer was so frightened by him that she bucked about wildly and started to spin. Then there was the buffle-head duck that heard Jake. He let out a squawk and flew out of the lake. Oh, what's the use? cried Jake in despair. They don't understand me. They don't even care. Then something magical happened. No one could explain as more and more animals watched them each day. They watched from shadows, ferns, and high perches in trees, from lakes, from rocks, and trickling streams. The more they watched, the more they could see that Jake was just misunderstood. They agreed. Jake was kind. He was sweet, though he growled all day. He was different, they noticed, which was more than okay. Grrr. Soon, dogs played with him, and owners, and children too. They scratched his ears and gave him treats to chew. They played with him with balls and sticks and even taught him cool new tricks. Jake was happier than he'd ever been, so he growled with the greatest of growls. Grrr! One that shook his body and ruffled his fur, sending off sweet cotton candy smells. And look, there are Jake's new friends, one of the yellow warblers and the deer and the buffle-headed duck. And there's even a ladybug there. Grrr. But then he stopped short. Did he scare his new friends? He winced and he thought, oh no, not again. Grrr. Yet when he opened his eyes, his friends hadn't strayed. They smiled and laughed, ready to play. Like even the painted turtle has come out of her shell. Grrr. Grrr, while he plays with the children. The end. We are all different and that's okay. It makes us unique. 
in our own special way. The end. That was so cute. Dude, Jake is such an amazing dog. Just a little misunderstood, but he found such a great friend in that squirrel. Oh, definitely. And I feel like that's something that we all need, right? We all need just that one person to kind of be like, you know what? They're not weird. They're quirky. Let's try to be friends. Yeah. Like, even though they're different than me, I think we might be able to get along. Yeah. And I feel like it's kind of up to all of us to kind of give that weird person or that different person just a shot. You know, you might be surprised. It might end up being a really great friend that you keep for your whole life. Yeah. You know, like, I have some friends. I'm a little bit older than our audience, but I have uh, one of my oldest friends. We've been friends since we were in sixth grade. <laughs> so I won't say how many years that's been, but um, she was one of those people that was a little bit quirky and a little bit different than I was. And, um, you know, and it's been one of the best friendships that I've had. See, and that's amazing. And animals are just the same way. Some of them have different life scenarios, different things that goes on, just different personalities. And people who are looking to adopt or just people who work in shelters like we do have to give them that shot to kind of figure out who are you really. Yeah, most definitely. And, you know, every animal I think has their strengths and has their weaknesses. And, you know, and it's just learning what everybody's strengths are. And, you know, you'll find someone that you love. So one of my strengths is actually working with all of you guys to learn a little bit of Spanish. So because we mm -hmm. are here in story time, let's try it out again for this year, guys. And that's, and that's one of my weaknesses. So I look forward to this. So I'm going to put the first word up on the screen for everybody to see. Okay, so what does the word, oh, Miss Izzy, you're going to have to say this one because I can't. Alrighty, guys. So what do you think the word incomprendido or incomprendida means? This is one of those masculine and feminine words that we used to talk about. So depending how the noun identifies. So do, de, do, 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 de, do. All right. And we're going to close in three, two, and one. A hundred percent says misunderstood. Very good, guys. So yes, this is a thousand percent misunderstood. Just like Jake, right? He was a little growly, but that didn't mean he was mean. And I could definitely say I know a couple of dogs that are like that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right. So our next word is going up on the screen now. All righty, guys. So what does gruñido mean? And that little fancy squiggle above the N is just making the ñ sound. So gruñido, ñ, ñ. That's the sound we're looking for. So what do you think that means? Growl, bark, or purr? So I was trying to be, you know, a little tricky throwing purr in there, but um, nobody <laughs> went for it. So they said growl. You guys are so smart. Am I talking to all Spanish speakers here? Yeah, that means growl. Very good job, guys. Hmm. All right. The next one has that fancy O or A at the end. All righty. So we're back to the masculine feminine. Amistoso or amistosa, depending how the noun identifies. So are we scared? Are we lonely? Or are we friendly? What do you think? Ooh, this one's splitting the, the audience a little bit. So uh, we're going to close in three, two, <clears throat> and one. So half said lonely, and the other half said friendly. So the half that chose friendly, you guys are actually correct. And this is coming from the word amistad, which means friend. So friendly. So let's see, we've got two more words on here. So, and I have a feeling that everybody is going to choose the right answer for this one. 
because I feel like most people have seen these words together before. I know I have. Wow, that's actually pretty true. This one I've seen pretty often, even in, in English things. So what does mas feliz mean? And just right. like when you're translating any language, sometimes you have to go from two words to one word, one word to two words, just whatever right. translates best. So I made this one a little shorter because everybody right off the bat said happier. <laughs> Very good job, guys. So yes, mas means more, feliz means happy, more happy, happier, same thing. Yeah. So why is it not a one-to-one -one translation though? There's one word for one word. So we've got two Spanish words equal one English word. Yeah, so you guys are gonna get a full on linguistic thing, but um, basically it just has to do with the correct translation of meaning. So it's sometimes very difficult to accurately grasp what the core word means by utilizing only one-to-one translations so there isn't a like um a upgraded version of feliz like there isn't you know like a felicer how we have a happier <laughs> so it's just mas feliz all right thank you um and our last word has well it's got some fancy lines in here and yeah, so these lines are actually called accents or accentos, and it just lets you know where to add stress onto the word, which just means you're giving it a little more oomph. So what does the word unico or unica mean? Only, unique, first. All right, so we're going to close in three, two, and one. And everyone said yeah. unique. Very good job, guys. So yes, this word means unique. Now, it's kind of a direct sounding thing, right? Unico, unique. So the only thing you ever have to really worry about with this word is going to be those accents, remembering correctly where they go. So, well, thank you, Miss Izzy, for sharing that uh, Spanish with us today. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? Yes, I do have a co-star today. So if you guys give me one minute, I'm going to go grab her. Okay. So this is super exciting. You guys know that we always try and share um, a friend with us. And we try and make that friend uh, as closely related to the story as we can. So like last, um, you know, the last story that we read, we uh, talked about Sticky the Kitty, and uh, we met some feline friends. And so today I have a feeling we aren't going to meet a squirrel because, you know, they're wild animals. Um, but today right, we guys. are meeting. So this here is Mumu. Hi, Mumu. Oh. Hello, Mumu. Her full name is actually Melissa. Um, and as you guys can hear, she is very vocal. I heard her grunting. So, so because she can get a little excited and is a, basically a little tank. Oh, yes, mamas. Um, some people can be a little scared of her, especially because of what she looks like. She got the little ears, you know. Hi. Say hi. But she's actually a really sweet girl. Um, she does growl at everybody the first time she meets them. But once she's comfortable, oh, she is the sweetest dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I heard her grunting. That sounded like a little bit like what Jake does when he, you know, plays with people. He growls. And Moo Moo here, I heard her grunting as you were scratching her underneath her chin. Oh, yeah, she and she's really big on love and cuddles, <clears throat> and she actually really likes other dogs, but she's kind of stiff, you know, she doesn't really know, like, are they going to be my friends? So she's kind of like that little awkward kid who doesn't know if he should play or not. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Girl. She just wants to play. She looks a little camera shy today. She's a little bit. She doesn't really know what's going on. <laughs> So, yeah, good girl, mama. Yeah, so, yeah, oh, look at, I can hear her grunting as you're scratching her. 
in her favorite place. But we've learned, as we learned with Jake, that doesn't always mean that it's a bad thing. It's just her own way of, you know, expressing herself and her happiness. Exactly. And honestly, when it comes to Mumu, when she's quiet, that's usually when when things aren't going great. That's when she's getting into some kind of mischief. <laughs> Yeah, I can say I had a dog um, once. I actually had a Siberian Husky, and she lived uh, till she was about fourteen. Um, but people would always be scared of her because she was around sixty-five pounds, and so you know, and she seemed like she was trying to lunge at people, but really she was just like, "Oh my God, look at me! Here I am! I want to be your friend." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And people would get very intimidated by that. Yeah. Oh, yes. And it doesn't help that Mumu doesn't really have a, a gentle setting. Um, <laughs> she believes in, in loving with her whole body at full force at 10 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering if any of our audience members have an animal that has been a little bit misunderstood at times. So you guys can go ahead and put um, your responses in the chat box if you'd like. Okay, be free, Momo, be free. Go ahead. <laughs> so I'm sure she loves her love, but she also oh. loves to just run around and be free. So. Yes, yes, okay. Okay, good girl. All right, so it doesn't look like we have any questions. Um, today. So thank you, Miss Izzy, so much for sharing with us our new Spanish vocabulary. I know some of our friends um, got the answers right off the bat and others didn't. I know I learned a little bit of something today. Yeah, this was actually a really great way to open up that conversation. Okay, thanks, Mumu. <laughs> open up the conversation about making allowances for people, right? And just because people might not be what we're used to doesn't mean that that's necessarily a bad thing. So I really hope you guys take Jake's story to heart and you really run with it. Yeah, and I hope everybody joins us next month as we read about Jake and he's going to doggy daycare, but we're also going to be talking with Samantha Shannon and I'm very interested to know if Jake is actually um, a story based on a real animal as we've read like Sticky the Kitty was based on a real animal. So we can uh, pick her brain a little bit next month. It's gonna be exciting guys. And I hope we see you all there. Thanks so much for tuning in. Okay, Momo, you wanna Thanks say bye? Thanks for joining right. us. We'll see everybody later. It was nice seeing you, Miss Izzy. Nice seeing you again. Bye, bye. guys.